This next piece is actually called Rules to Text By, or Rules of Textual Engagement. And what happened was, you know, somebody brought that book to me, you know, that book. It was written a few few years back by this, uh, called The Rules, by these women, Elaine Fine and Sherry Schneider. Oh my God, I realized I had done everything wrong. <laughs> Absolutely everything. But nevertheless, um, so I took it and what it made the most sense to me was the relationship really, what it was speaking to was the relationship between a reader and a text. And so that's what it turned into. So thank you. <clears throat> so next time you're about to read a book, take note. Looking at a text first is a dead giveaway of interest. Let it look at you. Make that text feel that you are unattainable, that you are fulfilled and functional and happy without reading it. You are perfectly capable of living with or without it. You are not an empty vessel waiting for that text to fill you up, to entertain, illuminate, or transport you. No, you are alive and enthusiastic, engaged in deep socio-political, post-industrial, anti-consumerist aesthetics. <laughs> you do not need to intersect with that syntagmatic quagmire. So pace the relationship slowly. It's only natural that when you discover a text you like, that you connect with, you want to read it all the time. You want to know all about its history, its context, intentions, perus, its intertextual references. You want to know everything almost overnight. So it's hard to say no when it beckons, calls out, wanting you to read it. But be distant and unobtainable. For goodness sake, you are not an open book. So unveil yourself slowly. Read it letter by letter, line by line, savoring each sonora cluster, stanza. Read it perhaps only once a week at first. And after you become ever so passionately engaged with every curve, line, every orthographic homage, each syntactic moment, tell that text, I'm sorry, I already have plans. But the next time it wants you to read it. <laughs> Even if you feel intoxicated by the smell of its print, the thickness of its paper, the smell of it on your fingers, in your nose, tell that text, I'm sorry, but my reading itinerary doesn't include you. <laughs> For this text may be dangerous, full of unwanted dis-ease, slippage, it may ooze testosterone, <laughs> and be disastrously unfaithful. Don't be surprised if that text calls out to you in your sleep, in your dreams, if it calls out to you the next morning, or when you are reading other texts, or during sweaty discourse. When you finally agree to immerse yourself in it, explore that text like uncharted territory. Read it like you've never read before. Read it with verb, with passion. Insert yourself in it. Engage with every aspect of its teleology, its material makeup, and the foundations of its thinking, systems, codes, queries. Let it swirl through you and caress each pneumatic moment of never-ending possibility with no assumptions of truth, authenticity, or closure. Be gentle and be rough. <laughs> Let it do things to you. 
you as you do things to it, simultaneously enter its paradigmatic and syntagmatic axes with your mouth. Gently caress its traces, entrances, complexities, and travel with it through sonoric and material exuberance. Let it resonate with you. Make it scream. And after, be casual and unmoved by the fact that that chapter or stanza is over. With that attitude, chances are that text will be clinging to you. Don't try to keep it with you by suggesting that you can penetrate deeper, that you alone are able to unpack its intricately woven complex references when you read it in bed. <laughs> in fact, don't spend all your time with your text in bed. Take it out. Hold it close in your pockets or between your inner thighs. Rub its spine. Embrace it with your fingers or under your arm. Make it ache for you. Remember, you are in control of your own text to see. <laughs> but if you absolutely cannot take it, if your patience gets the better of you, if you just need to hear its voice, read a little, then close it. Do not let the text think that just because you have your text, you will read it too. So if I were you, I'd take that text out, take it to a book party, a library, a bookstore, a gallery. Take it into a classroom where other texts are being celebrated. Show that text. It's not the only text in town. Watch its pages crumple. Turn inward, remind it at any time it could be remaindered, manhandled, manipulated, or marked down. It could be marginalized. But be careful, because when you eventually make the decision to read the text fully, you may discover certain flaws. You may find things about it that you wish were different. It may not be as playful as you may have wanted. It may be too full of assonance, or its harsh juxtapositions or collisions may irritate you. Perhaps you will find its margins too wide, or its lexicon unwieldy. Perhaps its ambiguous nature will seem unsatisfying, or its ellipsis artificially plumped up. <laughs> But you must decide if you can accept these grammatological blemishes and work them. Because that text, that text is not just looking for a light reading, but a real reader, a close reader, a reader that will make it feel alive. For goodness sake, the text is not just after a one night scan. <laughs> the text wants something real, lasting, that only you can offer. It wants a fully metonymous relationship for life. <laughs>